Hello, I am Nick the Tool and today we have got Mac versus Snap-on. So we're going to do a demonstration on toolboxes. So firstly, thank you very, very much for tuning into my channel. I hope you like it. Remember to press that like button, hit the notification bell so any new videos you'll get them and please subscribe, it is appreciated. So let's start with my roving reporter. Let's have a chat to Nick who's looking at the Mac toolbox. Thank you, Nick, for moving over to me, and I'll show you now the Mac Tools Edge Range. So the reason I want to do this video is just to show you some of the comparisons. I'm not in any way putting this toolbox down. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly good. Does what it says in the tin, holds your tools. I just want to show you the differences between Snap-on and Mac Tools. So this is three weeks old. It's a current toolbox sold in the UK. I don't know if the same box is sold around the world. I believe these are manufactured by Sealy Tools and have a Mac badge put on, but we'll come to that a little bit later. Let's show you features and what you get for your money. So when we open the lid on the toolbox, the first thing that surprises me is how heavy the lid is. So watch your fingers, because it's obviously going to fall down and trap them. So we need to open the box fully. Gas straight, just like your snap-on boxes to help lift the lid. But instead of having a full hinge on here, it just has a bolt here and a bolt here for the thing to pivot on. So if you put a bar in and just leave it at the top, the top would pop off. When you bring the lid down on the snap-on one, as you've seen, we've got sheet bolts that go into the side for extra strength. In this toolbox, all we've got is a little hook that comes into the middle, into this tiny thin bit of steel here. So put a bar in there and you soon in. The lock on here comes through the toolbox. It's got one of the chub style locks, which are brilliant for security. The only problem is that if you put a pair of grips on the outside and twist it, the whole lock twists and then you can get into the toolbox with ease. Design wise, what is this big area for? As you can see, it just gets where all the junk gets chucked. Nobody wants to put tools on top of tools and nobody's got any tools that are that big. So this is totally wasted space. If you look at the Mac, the, the Sealy version of this box, it has a 45 degree tilt on the front. So the way they've changed the look is to make it square, but it's the same box. If we look on the side of the toolbox here, this piece of steel on here, as you can see, it's quite flexible. It's only a low gauge steel, it's not very thick. Obviously that keeps the weight of the toolbox round, so it's nicer when you're wheeling it around, it's a bit lighter. But this is the inside and the outside of the toolbox. There's no second box. So if you buy a heritage snap-on box, there's a box inside a box that the runners sit on. And then there are Z strengtheners and gussets and corner edges put in to build the strength. That stops your toolbox racking when you try to pull it and it's full of weight. If I take out one of these drawers, so I'll just take this drawer out here and move it out of the way. Firstly, the roll of ball bearings are much smaller than the ball bearings in the snap-on drawer in a heritage box. If I open this fully, now I'm hoping you're going to be able to see this. If you drop the camera, Mr. Cameraman, inside here and I open this drawer, you can see my hand passes through here like a magic trick. There's absolutely no support inside the toolbox. And if we come round, I'll let him swap places with me. If we look here, this here, is the outside panel of the toolbox. There's absolutely no strength. The box comes round and folds in two inches, which is where they hang the runner. And then at the back of the drawer here, there's just a little tiny bend tab, which enables you to see where it's attached. So again, pretty poor. So on a drawer of this size, why on earth have they put one runner on when there are slots for extra runners? So you can put all that weight in there and that runner just isn't gonna take the weight. Seems a bit crazy. When we look at the drawer, the runner is providing the strength. The steel here is single skinned. There's no fold edge on the top. The back panel is just a separate panel, which is spot welded in, in three or four spot welds. And the locking mechanism just literally is tacked onto the back of the drawer. Just trying to lift the drawer liner up here just comes through with two little spot welds. Give it a tug and that'll just stay in the box and the drawer will come open. So obviously that makes a bit of a difference. When we look at the construction of the toolbox here, the snap-on one is set on two pieces of square box section, which gives you a lip here, but gives you strength. So there's a proper chassis under the box. This has no chassis and it's just sat on a single sheet of steel, which will obviously mean it fits very snugly but it doesn't necessarily give you that strength that you're looking for. If we move down to the roll cab 
I'm gonna just take the camera off the cameraman a second and I'm gonna drop underneath here and I'm hoping that we're gonna be able to see this in this light. So underneath the toolbox, there is just a single bend in the center and that's in two places, one at the back as well. And then the casters are actually sat just straight onto sheet steel, look. So I would be concerned with a lot of weight on there, that's gonna push up into the toolbox. So that's, uh, that's the underneath. I'll just hand you back to the best cameraman in the UK. There you go. And then the other one, which is an obvious one, is size of the drawers. So you tend to find Mac toolboxes are often an inch longer or an inch higher, so they look like a bigger box. But when you look at a drawer like this, you can see this chap's put his sockets in and he's got a two inch gap above there. Now, I used to sell storage solutions for warehousing and all you're trying to do is get rid of air gaps because that's wasted space. So why not stick another drawer there to enable you to put more tools in? Why not put another drawer here and another drawer here and have a little tiny lip at the top so you can store more kit? Reason they don't do that, you can put more weight in it, box can't take the weight, so obviously then you have issues. So I have to stress, there's nothing wrong with this, it fits a budget, it does what it says in the tin, it looks a nice looking box, but the strength just isn't there. Price wise, very, very similar. The last final thing I'm gonna mention is this over here. So if you have a look on here, it says made in the USA. Now it also says with global materials. Now I've spoken to a Mac dealer recently, I'll mention his name when I cut back to the other Nick who stood by the snap-on toolbox. Apparently this is made in the US, but the wheels come from Italy. So if I was making a toolbox in the US, I wouldn't pay to ship the wheels in. So it seems a bit of a strange one, but anyway, we'll leave that there. So I think we've covered everything we want to talk about on this. So I'll cut back to me, over to you, Nick, on the other truck. Okay, so thank you, Nick, for handing back to me. We're back on the Snap-on truck here. And this box is a brand new color. So we've got the power blue color. And this is a heritage toolbox. So this is starting toolboxes for Snap-on. You may be aware we start with Heritage, then we go to Classic, then we go to Master Series, and then we go to Epic, which is top of the food chain. I've done a video on every different style of box, so feel free to search for those on YouTube and you'll be able to see the differences. But today we're talking entry-level toolboxes. So the Mac Edge range you've just seen is their entry-level box, and this is a Heritage box, which is the Snap-On's entry-level box. So a lot of the design features you see on this box are carried throughout the range. And these boxes are truly built to last. This toolbox, I started in 99, so what, 22 years ago, and I was selling this exact toolbox then. The only difference was it had friction slides instead of rollerball slides, and it was also only available in red, royal blue, or black. So time's moved on, rollerball slides, and loads more colors. But the actual design and the build of the box is exactly the same, tried and tested, and these boxes are still out there in workshops, 20 years old plus. So let's start from the top and work down and see some of those differences between Mac and Snap-on. So, as you can see, the lid is supported, apart from the last little inch. But here, if I get it just about right, it will stay there. You can't do that with the other box. So these are much stronger gas struts. Obviously, it's a smaller lid because the other box is 55 inches. This is only 40 inches, but the gas struts get stronger on the bigger the boxes. So they work very similar. On here, you're not gonna dent this top. It's very, very strong. And the folds around here are to give it maximum strength. There's also a panel inside here, same as the Mac box, but you'll notice this is a bigger panel and it carries a lot more spot welds. Obviously the gas struts, same as the Mac box, are across the top. But on the Mac box, as you remember, it just had those two flimsy pins. This has a full length piano hinge running the full length of the toolbox. And this is actually spot welded to the lid and then screwed to the box. So if you need to remove that lid, let's say you dropped a ramp on it or damaged the lid, you can replace the lid and take it off very easily. Locking mechanism, you saw me talk about the chub lock on the Mac one. Our lock is very similar, it's still a chub lock design, but our outer collar spins. So if you do try and grip hold of it, you can't actually physically turn the lock. Now, if I take the key here and I put the key in and turn it, you'll notice just here on this side, you can see a lock rod coming out. Now that lock rod runs all down the inside of the toolbox and it punches into these two holes, one here and one here. So when the box is locked, it's very secure. Obviously the Mac just had that little clip in the center. 
Top of the box is about three inches high and there's a recess inside the lid so you can stand your sockets up with ease but there's no extra wasted space like the other box. If we move into the construction of the box um, you'll notice there's curved edges this is a bit of a signature of the snap-on boxes so our heritage range has curved sides we also make it with a square edge which I'll come to later. If you come down to the bottom of the box here I don't know if you can see very easily I'll just put a torch on if you look in here, you can actually see this box section inside there. So the toolbox is actually sat on two box channels. So that's a full chassis underneath the toolbox, which is supporting it. The Mac one is just a steel base on top, sitting on top of the steel box. So as you mentioned before, these are very solid. They're not flimsy like the Mac box was that we discussed earlier. So let's move back up onto the top of the toolbox. So we're now going to have a look at the drawers and inside of the toolbox. So you'll notice, uh, actually, I don't think we need that light on, do we? It's quite light on here. So we've got different height drawers. Now you'll notice that there's space for drawer runners. Well, that's the same as the Mac box. Now we carry these drawer runners in stock and we do two specs of box. You can have a heavy duty box with all the extra drawers um, runners on, or you can have a light duty box without. So if you're a normal car tech, plenty strong enough. Obviously, the drawers aren't anywhere near the depth of that big drawer on the Mac box we were discussing. If you want to add extra runners for not a lot of money, they just clip in and they, you've easily got more strength. The drawers don't ride open on their own. If you don't know how to open them, you've got a prying eye, somebody wants to get in there and have a look at stuff, they don't know how to open it. It's fitted with lock and roll, which is underneath. So you just slide anywhere along here to the left and it releases the catch and then the drawers will open. So if you need to move the toolbox around the workshop, you know your drawers aren't gonna ride open and tip the box over as well. If you don't like that idea and it doesn't really fit with you, no problem, just pick it out and remove it. You don't have to have the lock and roll. Something the Mac box had on its runners was slow close drawers. Fantastic idea, I think it's brilliant. Our drawer runners don't work in the same way. When we shut the box, the box is shut. Now, personally, when you're using this toolbox, you shut the drawer. You don't need to get to here and then have to force it that last bit because of the slow close. So these are a lot easier to run backwards and forwards. So personally, I prefer them, but personal choice, nothing wrong with the other ones. So roll cab, very similar. This particular one is a split drawer. Now we need to discuss the drawer differences. So what I've actually done on this side, I've got another heritage box. This is a, a 54 inch. So this is the same width as the Mac one we were looking at. And if we come down a little bit lower, we can see the construction inside. So I'll just grab the torch again. So in here, just look at the difference in the bottom. So the Mac one was a sheet piece of steel with little lines that were like welded on. This is full bend. So you've got an inch bend there and an inch bend here. You've also got a strengthener down the center. The draw runners are attached in three places. So you've got plenty of support and just look at the size of the runner in comparison to the Mac one and even the ball bearings are bigger. If we come to the end of the box here, this is what I was referring to about a box inside a box. This is the inside, this is the outside. And then there are strengtheners, you possibly can see it, possibly not down the side here. You can actually see the strengtheners put inside and this is to stop that racking, which is a very, very important feature. So we'll move back up onto the other blue box that we've got over here. And I'll now just show you the drawers. So if I grab one of these heritage ones out of the um, candy apple box I've got there, um, you'll notice some of the features. So seven folds in the front. This is giving you the poss strongest possible way to make the drawer front. The Mac one's got less folds. We have a painted finish and then we put an aluminium trim on the front and this is crimped in place to hold it steady. If you look at the Mac one, it's just got a coloured either black or chrome plinth that's just self-adhesive onto the top of the drawer. So not as ideal. Gives a nice look from a distance, but not very reliable in how well it's gonna last and how well it will wear. If you look at this edge here, it's actually got a full fold in it. So there's a fold on the top giving you about an eight mil overlap. So this gives you strength and rigidity. The drawer is absolutely solid, where the Mac one uses the runner to create the strength. If I turn the box to the back, you can see that there's a full fold on every corner. And this is a separate piece of steel, which is spot welded all the way in. And there's also a lip. So we've got a 10 mil lip on the back of here. This stops your tools and your paperwork riding over and getting stuck down the back of the toolbox. Security is a big deal when you're storing expensive tools. So our locking mechanism comes right through the back of the toolbox. 
and then it is actually a folded over piece of steel and then it's folded on the inside of the box as well so if you look here you can see that it's actually folded the tabs right back and then it's spot welded in place so if you took that drawer even if you were to break the spot welds you're not going to be able to pull that through the back of the drawer so we've covered plenty of features i hope you can see that this is an honest video literally showing you the straightforward differences between the boxes so what does it come down to? Well, it's personal choice. If you're spending your money, you want to invest it wisely. The difference in the prices of the toolbox is hardly anything. They're very similar priced. Yes, the Mac one is bigger, but it's got less linear meterage of storage. There's less drawers. You can't get as much kit in it. So it's a bigger footprint and stores less stuff. The actual steel is lighter, so you're not getting as much metal for your money. It isn't reinforced and designed the same way, so you're not getting the strength built into the toolbox. The paint finish on the other boxes isn't the same as this. This is a powder coated finish. You can dip your hand in aviation fluid and stick it on the side of this box. The paint won't fall off. It really is built to last. So I hope you like this video. I'm not going to mention the Mac guy who I said I would do in the other video clip. And I also need to talk about who makes the boxes. So I've done a little bit of research and I don't believe they're made by Sealy Tools. I believe the Mac box is made by Waterloo in America with global parts. And I believe Waterloo also make the Sealy box because they are extremely similar in their design. I can't believe two boxes would be so similar if they weren't made by the same factory. Then let's get down to where they're made. This is another thing which we keep hearing. Really, really quick one. We have two plants for toolboxes. If you buy an Epic, a Classic Series or a Master Series, they're made in Algona in America. If you buy a Heritage Series with square edges, it's made in Algona. If you buy a Heritage box with curved edges, 26 inch, 40 inch or 55 inch, it's made in Kunchang in China. This is a multi-million pound toolbox plant in China. Snap-on's biggest growth market for toolboxes is in Asia. So if you're going to build a brand new plant, and these are built by us for us. So they start right at the beginning, raw materials, right the way through all the folding, the bending, the welding, it's our factory. So that is where they're built. It's no myth, it's not anything we're trying to hide. Hopefully you've really enjoyed the video. I do appreciate your comments, whether they're good or bad, please try and give a realistic comment underneath. I'd like to hear what you think, and I hope that I've put this over properly and you can see the differences. And if you think I'm stringing you a line, jump on the Mac van and have a look how the box is made. Jump on the Snap-on van, have a look how the Snap-on box is made. So hopefully this has um, dried up a lot of the concerns and where you should be spending your money. But I leave it completely up to, do, to you. Enjoy your investment, whichever you choose to buy. I'm Nick the Tool and I'll see you on my next video.